So uh, I'm Marco. Uh, I'm one of the founding members of Teda. Um, and we're an agricultural cooperative that's working off a hectare and a half of land, really in the heart of Luxembourg, 15 minutes away from city center. About seven, eight years ago, uh, Pitt, Sophie and I were actively involved in an in, in a organization called CELL here in Luxembourg that was doing everything related to permaculture and transition movement, community gardens, all sort of things, uh, really cool things. Um, and that's where we met. And we really felt that it would be great to put a lot of these concepts and ideas into practice on a land-based uh, farm that could uh, really make a difference in terms of uh, food sovereignty, at least locally. And uh, that's when this idea or this dream emerged. And since then we started kind of putting, num doing a bit of number crunching, seeing if it would be possible. Uh, and we very quickly realized that, wow, it is possible. And there is a demand for locally produced, fresh, organic produce. People would want to be part of a, what would be eventually Luxembourg's first CSA. Uh, and it was in 2014 that we gained access to this piece of land over here and within a month of that created the cooperative and started uh, distributing veggie baskets. Uh, so that's what, it's five years ago now? So we're in our sixth season at the moment. Okay, so I think a little bit of the context is important here. Luxembourg imports over 98% of its uh, vegetable consumption uh, and any farming that does take place here is highly subsidized uh, and not really a profitable economic model. So what we wanted to do is to show that it is possible to first of all make a living from a small scale uh, farm uh, as well as produce local fresh organic produce. Uh, something that is not very common and there is a demand for. So food sovereignty for us is, is this capacity to kind of produce, even if it's for 200 families, 250 families, uh, it's nothing major, but locally in our community, it is, it is impactful uh, and has contributed to what we call a new social cohesion around agriculture which isn't just about consuming local and fresh uh, produce, uh, but also connecting with the producers and where the food comes from. So, for example, we have open days where members and uh, the general public come up to the farm, uh, see how things are done, participate in some of the big uh, harvests, for example, and that way really get to kind of get a, get a feel for what it means to grow food. And it's a, it, it is very inspiring to see how that changes people percep people's perception uh, uh, around food. So I think a lot uh, has to be said about the CSA model and how helpful that has been to um, to support us and make make basically ensure that we can kind of plan and and, and know what's coming in at the end of the month. Uh, imagine we started off without anything, nothing. We didn't have uh, much capital, we didn't have land. All we had was just the conviction and the idea that we can do this and found people that were trusting enough to become members before there was even any production there. Um, so that's what helped us to get going. In that process, we learned a whole bunch. We thought we knew a couple of things, but actually we realized we don't know anything. And maybe now we're starting to, to learn a couple of things. Uh, and what, 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 what really has enabled us to do what we're doing is the, this mutual kind of responsibility and communication and uh, interaction between producers and consumers, between us and the members that give us the feedback of what's good, what could be better, what they liked, what they would want more of, um, as well as support us when the, the times are, are tough. Uh, thankfully, that hasn't happened in the last few years, but in the, in the first years, there were weeks where we just couldn't offer a basket and the members were there to support us with that and we were totally understanding because of this uh, 
kind of uh, more global understanding of what agriculture is and not just like, hey, I paid for this, I want my, I want my veggies. Um, yeah. Uh, what, what, another thing that has helped us a lot in terms of the, the model has been this uh, idea of a cooperative. So we're not a not-for-profit, we're not a standard enterprise, we are a cooperative, which is a juridical statute here in, in Luxembourg. Uh, and basically anyone that buys uh, shares or social parts, we call them, uh, it has a right to participate in, in, in the decision-making of the cooperative. Uh, and that's how we raise the capital necessary to even start this in the beginning. So I mentioned we had no money. The way we managed to, to within the first month, raise 40,000 euros, which is what we needed to get things going, uh, was by doing this cooperative, by creating this cooperative. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the people consuming the veggies that are buying social parts. It can be two different things. Being a cooperator is not the same as being a member. Ideally, so a person can be both gets the veggies, but also takes parts in, in maybe the decision-making or voting in, in the general assemblies. Uh, but it is two different things. Uh, so that was another model that really helped us. Um, and then in terms of uh, how we manage things now, like five years later, uh, what, what is very beneficial is the fact that we're kind of not closing the loops, I would say, minimizing waste and increasing uh, like the, for example, anything that we have left over from distribution. So anything that doesn't go to the baskets or uh, members that didn't pick up their stuff. We are working with uh, restaurants, with the little shops uh, and individuals uh, where we resell or repurpose those uh, goods. So in a way they're being sold twice and we're, minima we're minimizing waste and uh, uh, managing to kind of like buffer a little bit the, the income with that. Uh, the baskets account for maybe 90% of the income. 5% uh, is, or a bit more, maybe this year, 6-7% uh, is uh, education. Um, and that's the way we want it. We want to show that it's the production that's keeping us going and securing our salaries, and not the education or the anything else. Uh, them. There's three pillars to Terra. One is the production of fruit and vegetables. So we do have fruit trees, as you will see. Um, uh, the second part is education, which takes form, like it, it can be either kindergarten schools coming here, classes from uh, uh, high schools uh, doing their little research over here, or, or it can be full on workshops uh, geared to professional market gardeners, or it could be permaculture courses, things like that, or increasingly cooking courses and transformation um, uh, workshops. Um, that's mainly the education part. And then the third part, the third pillar, would be this whole community building, which is done by, for example, giving the possibility to interns, uh, volunteers to come and, and help out and, and see how things are done. Uh, and these open days that are specifically geared to the general public, families, kids, uh, where it's a moment of celebration and uh, work as well, but in a festive spirit. And that's where Terra really shines, when you have uh, 60, 70 people of all ages coming together to make sauerkraut, for example. Uh, it's really inspiring to see how, yeah, how, how agriculture is essentially made to be done in, in community and not, not just one farmer or a couple working away, slaving away, hours on end. Yeah. Uh, and maybe something else that's really important for, our, for, our, for us personally is this work and life balance. No one lives on the farm. We all have a time frame, so we work eight hours. When those eight hours are up, we, we, we have a life to go back to. We have families to go back to. We have interests and other stuff to do uh, uh, as well. And the fact that we are a team gives us this ability to be able to, for example, take off for two weeks and go off on, on, a, on a holiday that we wanted to, that I wanted to go with my family or that someone else wanted to go. Uh, and I think this human side of it, the fact that we can just switch off and, 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 and not compromise our quality or, or uh, you know, our attention to other things in life, uh, that has been fundamental for, to, to our success in a way. Uh, and we're very proud of it. Yeah. So it's not necessarily easy, but uh, we, we make it happen. And, and uh, we're, we're, we're there for each other. Like if, 
uh, if for whatever reason one of us has something going on in their in their life, then there is space for for for, for people to you know to deal with other things as well. Uh, and that's helped us to not get to a point of burnout or not get overstressed and uh, uh, overwhelmed by by the reality of, of, of a farm, which by by definition nearly is in itself overwhelming. I mean, there's no way we can control all of this. So the, the three of us, so Pitt, Sophie and I, are the, are the founding members and are also the three people that are earning a, a, a salary, a full salary. Sophie's working part-time since she had kids. Um, and then on top of that, we, have, we are very lucky to be, um, what you call that, hiring uh, one of our previous apprentices, Christian, who spent three years doing her like vegetable gardening course, uh, the, the, the local vegetable gardening school. She, she just finished that, went off on a year uh, of traveling around the world visiting farms and will be coming back again in January to work full time with us. Uh, so that will be the fourth person. And then we always have apprentices, ranges from one to two, uh, that are doing this three year program. So they're three days here on the farm and two days in, in school. That's the core team. So four or five people that are pretty much, if not every, every day, you know, it's like on a weekly basis, they're always there. Uh, and then around that, there's, uh, especially in the summer or spring and summer months, there's interns that come for anything up to four months. Uh, and then a lot of volunteers that come on a daily basis as well, spontaneously. So it's quite a richness, quite a diversity of people around. Uh, which is both a blessing, but it can also be a curse, as many people that work with uh, volunteers might know. Uh, so our, our job is kind of to balance uh, things out, make sure people are feeling empowered and know what they're doing and are being productive, like useful, uh, as well as, you know, making it a, a beneficial experience for them. Um, and that's... To be honest, we're a bit understaffed. If we would like to take care of all the different systems that are in place here, <coughs> the veggies, the, the annuals, uh, the perennials, the bushes that we have, the flowers, we have some uh, ducks as well and bees and there's all sorts of wonderful things we would like to be fully on top of, but unfortunately with the amount of people we have, it's just not possible. So right now we're just kind of like scraping through things to do to keep, to, to make it happen, to make it financially possible. But uh, I think ideally we would need another two people full time to be able to, to manage it in a way that's just sweet, without stress and having things under control kind of thing. Yeah. So when we, when we started off, uh, the first few years, we were doing everything by hand. And if you imagine, we would have sometimes up to 30 meter beds with maybe eight rows of uh, rocket or something like that. And we would be harvesting that with a little knife uh, and a box next to us just going like this. Uh, literally that process for one day of harvest would take one person uh, at least a couple of hours to complete a bed. Um, and the quality of the cut was variable because it's kind of going up and down and the, the knife's not always hitting at a consistent height. Uh, and since we discovered the greens harvester that we've been using now for the past two and a bit years, it has really revolutionized our harvest days uh, because suddenly this, the same job that was taking us up to two hours, it can be done literally in like 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, and not only that, but the quality of the cut is actually a lot better, which means that we get like a second cut and a third cut and depending on the crop even more, uh, more quickly and better quality than with the, by hand. So the things we use it for is uh, like this, the, as I said, the rocket, uh, the Asia, what we call Asia salad, which is a mix of different colored mustard leaves. Uh, we would also potentially use it for things like uh, we had success with it uh, with portulac or porcelain, I think uh, you guys call it. Um, and things like Mitsuna, any small leaves that, that we're planting now, we used to interplant or intercrop with other, other uh, crops before. 
Now we don't do that anymore. We plant specifically for the greens harvester. Like it's designed, the plantings, the spacings, the everything is done in it with the greens harvester in mind. Uh, I would dread to think of a of a harvest day where there's stuff to be harvested with the greens harvester and this not working. Uh, that would really put us in trouble. <laughs> The ones that are working full-time have a 40-hour week schedule, uh, roughly. Uh, so depending on the time of year, we would uh, start, let's say, at 8 and uh, finish at 4. In the summer months, that might be earlier, and in the winter months, it might be a bit less, so there's a bit of fluctuation there. Uh, the, the week, the only thing that's fixed in the week are the harvest days. So Tuesday, Friday are harvest days. We spend most of the day doing that. Um, and then uh, we have the major distributions on Tuesday, Saturday, uh, which allows for the rest of the time, so Monday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, to, to be doing all the other ongoing tasks uh, on, the, on the farm, which uh, are kind of divided in three areas, one being the, the, the garden itself and the, the vegetables, another one being the administration work and the education uh, um, work uh, that, that needs to happen and the third being the different systems, the maintenance of the structures, the irrigation, uh, energy, all of that. Um, that's pretty much a standard week. We all finish uh, at uh, beyond five, there's rarely anyone uh, here and we all have our weekends off. Uh, except for sometimes when we have to do, we do a roster for the distributions on Saturday and we just take that time off another time. So we, we finally, after a couple of, I think it took us three years at least, we count the hours. And if you work overtime, you take it another time. I'm one of the co-founders with Mark and Pitt and we divided our our areas of, um, of what taking of what we take care of, and I'm doing communication, everything related to members and the cooperative, so managing it all, communicating about it, and pedagogical activities with the children. We have daycare centers, kindergartens, and school groups from all ages that can come to Terra. They pay for their visit and then they are involved in uh, whatever is happening in the garden. We try to do a little tour, they get to touch the soil, they get to plant, they get to harvest, they get to taste, you know, whatever they harvest like freshly from the plant. So it's a beautiful experience for them. Well, on harvest days, one thing is knowing what we need to harvest and how much of what and where it is. But then the other thing that is more spontaneous is who's coming to harvest. So we never know how many people are actually going to show up to come and help us. So managing who's doing what, being able to really tell everyone exactly how something is harvested. Because very often when you harvest something, it's not something you take at once, but it's something, it's taking care of the plant, it's weeding at the same time. So it always takes a bit of time and organizing who is doing what at what time, and to be able to actually finish on time by the time everything has to be done. Well, we prefer to call our customers members because they are members of the community-supported agriculture. And um, we have 227 of them this season. They have different options of where to pick up. They can come either here to the barn, that's the closest we have to the garden, that way they, they can just go 200 meters further and walk around the garden and just take a look. And then we have uh, two more pickup spots in the city. So we have two harvest days, Monday, uh, Tuesdays and, when and Fridays. And so yeah, it's more or less equally distributed where people go. Today we have um, two pickups happening at the same time, one here and one in the southern part of the, the city. And whenever we have a pickup that's outside of here, well, nearly every pickup except for this one, we, we have a truck. In the truck we're going to put up the boxes with the vegetables in order and we're going to ride on the board. So today we have 
there's some amount of zucchinis, there's some amount of tomatoes, and the members just basically walk around the truck and help themselves. They weigh themselves, they, especially tomatoes, they love to choose, like look at them, do I want a yellow one, do I want a striped one, do I want a black one, or... So, so it's for them also a pleasure of choosing their vegetables. Very often we, we have these questions, uh, yeah, but this is not exactly the same. Look at this broccoli, it's a bit bigger than that one, but then we're always like, you know, it really doesn't matter because people come here and mostly they are, they wouldn't take the biggest of everything. They might be like, oh, I really love broccoli and I'm gonna take this broccoli, but because of that, I might take a smaller parsley. So it really works on this, um, no one's getting only the best for themselves because it's a community. Overall, I think the members that we have do enjoy it, especially the members that come back every year. They love it. I mean, they get the freshest and most special food that you, could, you wouldn't find in a supermarket. So those guys like it. And then we have every year some people that try it out. And to be honest, it is not for everyone. I mean, people that don't like the surprise of not knowing every week uh, what am I actually going to get, well, or that are not flexible with cooking. So it does mean a bit of flexibility on the member's side course. Well, it's beautiful. It's um, already setting this up was just such an experience. I mean, Terra is our baby. It's, it's so much for all of us that are involved in it. And, um, and the mission that we have, because I think it's a project where Terra is so like holistic. It's not only about food. It's not only about being healthy. No, it's so, it's so coherent, I find, because very often there are projects that are good at this, but they might not be good at the social side, or they're good at the social side, but might actually have produce that are not very beautiful. So we, yeah, we try to, to be good at all of these. And then the most beautiful part is obviously the, the, the friendship. The friendship, the growing spirit of community, people that come on a regular basis, that's just the most gratifying, I guess. And then working outside in nature is always beautiful, as long as the weather plays along. <laughs> I was studying before this, and then, yeah, and then through my studies, I studied agroecology, and through the research I did there, I thought, wow, creating this farm, it would really work. I think it could work. So that's when I met Pitt and Marco, and they were also on the same line, and that's when we started. So I didn't really have an actual job before this. <laughs> But I already had very clear ideas of what I wouldn't want. So this, so this non-hierarchical um, way of working together where everyone is involved and has, has a saying and is respected as a whole person, not only a worker that comes and has to show up and leave, but like as a, as a real person. That, that's what I find is great at Terra. Here at Terra we have... Um, we have had more female apprentices than male apprentices, but also in the daily work at the farm, the volunteers that come, I think we have more women than, than men who would come. But uh, in general, it's a very, very diverse uh, group of people who come to help. We have uh, from refugees to people from here, to elder people, to younger people, to students, to apprentices that travel from far away. Men, women, everyone. <laughs> I think it gives, it's, it's very meaningful, it's nice to be working with the, the living, it's nice to see the results of all your hard labor uh, and there's nothing more comforting than a, especially at this time of uh, year a, a nice salad that we share at lunchtime with people that you love uh, and yeah you get nourished uh, not only in terms of uh, what you eat but also in terms of the connections and the conversations that you're, you're having. It's really a place of life, of, of, uh, of, of blossoming. And uh, even though it has its ups and downs and maybe there are days where, you know, it's cold and there's like uh, loads to do and you're just not motivated. But uh, overall, I think the, the benefit of, of the, the, the human and the natural aspect of it is just amazing. We, I think none of us would change this for, for anything. It's, it's really what we, beyond what we dreamt of when we, before we started. From our experience, like one thing that we would share with uh, people that maybe are starting a journey in, in, in this uh, direction uh, would be, don't do it alone. Uh, maybe, I mean, of course it depends on your circumstance, but 
uh, our reality, if it wasn't for the, the fact that it's a team and not necessarily our partner, but just friends. I mean, of course, it helps if they are friends. So, you know, we, we will hang out even uh, after work. Uh, and it's really important to get along well with uh, whoever you're starting with, but do not do it alone. Do it in a team. It makes, it, it divides the sorrows and multiplies the pleasures. It's the, uh, it, it's the, 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 the way to build uh, resilience in the project. Um, and the second thing would be, even if you are doing it alone or whether you're doing it with someone, doesn't matter. Find that balance between work and play. Make sure there's other things in your life that are equally, if not more important than, than this. Uh, I think that's very healthy.